Hi, I'm George Kay, and this is my father Niels. Hi. And welcome back to Father and Synthesizer. It's been two weeks since the last episode, and last time we were talking about the wavetable synthesizer, the 50 euro wavetable synthesizer. That was quite a project, wasn't it? Oh, yes, a major project. So let's keep talking about this project. Last time we showed you what it sounds like, and this time we're going to talk about how we made it. Now, we were developing something completely new for this, and let's start by showing off what went wrong. Let's start with the Arduino and STM graveyard. This should be a Halloween episode, shouldn't it? <laughs> We're showing off the dead corpses. Hey, you don't want STM zombies, eh? <laughs> <laughs> don't okay. bury them in a pet cemetery. <laughs> nah. Okay, this little guy, he met his maker because I did a fundamental error on the PCB. I added two connectors was exactly the same size. One is a power connector and one is a front panel connector. Now, what happens if you plug the power into the front panel connector? This little one could tell you if he would still be alive. Yeah, and that one went up in flames. It went up in a smoke and in a flash. Sorry about this. Now, from mistakes you learn. So what I did during the development, I uh, put some tape on top of the front panel connector, so I was not tempted to... Connect power to the front panel. <laughs> yeah. That went well for quite a while. During development everything worked fine. Yes, and then, well, there comes a time when you plug everything together again, and guess what? This little one could tell the same sad story. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> no. And another one bites the dust. And now these two are, may they rest in peace. But that's not all. And uh, you see, people say all good things come in three. Well, this USB to TTR connector would tell a different story. Here's the third one. What I did here is I did not plug it in into the TTR connector on the PCB, but into the encoder connector. And farewell. Yeah. And then we've got another Arduino here. We have no idea how this one died, we can't remember, but we also killed that one. Yep. So that's our cemetery for now. <laughs> and I'm sure it's going to grow. It will, it will. And, and I didn't keep all the, the operational amplifier that died. Oh no, that wouldn't be a graveyard as much as a mass grave. <laughs> right. This wavetable synthesizer took three months to develop and it was uh, by far our longest project and also some of our most fun, one of our most fun projects. Yeah, fun and uh, it's an original project, so nothing copied here except of course some libraries that some um, ambitious other people wrote. Um, but that's normal if you do microcontroller development. This was our first big step up from the Arduino because the STM is much more powerful than an Arduino. Yeah, you can't compare. It's uh, very, very powerful. It has a 32-bit word width compared to the uh, 8 bits on the Arduino. So you get a lot more processing power. So you can do more advanced projects with that. Okay, working with the STM microcontroller is a little bit more ambitious than to work with an Arduino because usually the, the uh, IDE, the environment for programming these controllers is quite special and, and you would need a lot of computer knowledge uh, in order to work with that. Fortunately, one guy from Australia Roger Clarkson, he built a library for the STM Blue Pill, which is compatible with the Arduino IDE. So people used to work with Arduino IDE can as easily work with the STM 32 Duino <laughs> IDE. Yeah, I'll put a link to that in the description if I find it. Yeah, the, the advantage of, of that is that you have many very powerful libraries that support you on your own projects. So you don't have to start from scratch, you can build on the shoulders of giants. Yeah, but uh, that brings us quite neatly to the next thing. Not all libraries work, do they? No, not everything. So I tried to add a MIDI input to, to the uh, STM wavetable and I could
couldn't get those libraries to work. They were beautiful on the, on the Arduino, but for some reason I had no luck with them on the SCM. So I wrote my very own library for that, very basic. It just, it just does what it needs to do in order to, to behave like a synthesizer. And um, uh, that library will of course be included in the... It is, it is, yeah. yeah included in the, uh, on our website in the download. Yeah, yeah, it's a, actually not a library file, it's a .h file. So it's, yeah, it's in the archive. So how do you start, get sound out of a um, microcontroller that has no analog output? Um, but they all have a PWM output. Which and is just a digital uh, one zero output. Yeah. And you, you yeah. modulate the pulse width of those ones and zeros those ons and offs to create sound. Yeah, you, you modif modify the pulse widths and that gets translated through a, um, a two low pass filters to a uh, analog signal. And because the PVM frequency is very high, you won't hear it. So this is not comparable with uh, like a PWM input on a uh, oscillator or something. No. This is a very different thing. Mm. So it was a big moment for us when for the first time we heard a sound coming out of our project. Yeah, I think we even showed it off on the show before. Yeah, I guess. Because we, we, uh, we did the weekly update thing, mentioned yeah. it at the end of every episode, yeah. back when we were still weekly. Yeah. That was really a huge moment for us. And as soon as the MIDI worked, you could play notes and you can listen to them. And um, we noticed something very awful. Yeah, because every time you pressed a key on a, on a MIDI keyboard, and it sent a note. The note played on the wavetable synth, but it made an awful clicking noise at the beginning and at the end of the sound. So when you pressed the key, it clicked, and when you let go, it made a click again. Now, as an audio engineer, I know this is caused because the waveform suddenly starts, so the speaker moves instantly from nothing to a value. So, what in audio engineering, what you do to fix that is use fades. Mm -hmm. And how, what are fades in the context of a synthesizer? They're just an envelope, an ADSR. So we added an ADSR, we prioritized the ADSR for the wavetable synthesizer. And once we had that up and running, all of the clicks were gone. You just need to yeah. add a little bit of attack and a little bit of release so the speaker doesn't immediately move from zero to on. So you have a little, it needs, can be the fraction of a millisecond, yeah. but that will be enough to not have it click. So now we had beautiful, notes coming out of the synthesizer, but we wanted to have more than one voice, right? Yeah, polyphony. That's the reason we made this whole thing. <laughs> to integrate in, our, in the, the generative rack to the harmony uh, generator that we're eventually going to build one day. Mm -hmm. So we needed something that does polyphony. Right. And that's why we built this wavetable synthesizer. Yeah. So the next challenge was to extend the existing software parts to allow for a polyphonic replay uh, polyphonic playing of the synthesizer. That went fairly well, but soon we noticed the next problem. At some times the notes hung. Yeah. They just got stuck. The MIDI often it got stuck. Recognizes, register something. Yeah. It got lost somewhere. I think we mentioned that in one of our blogs as well. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure we did. Yes, we did. And uh, that was the point where I said, ah, throw it all away. And we use a commercial, or not commercial, we use a, a pre-built library from somebody else. Which we did. Which we did. For and, a time. And after a while, playing with that, we noticed, okay, they have a similar problem. I went back to my original project and um, debugged it quite thoroughly and found the reason was that I was treating the, uh, the release part of a note. So, what happens here is you press a key on your keyboard, you get a note on signal. You release the key, you get a note off signal. But on that, that same is note on the same channel. On the same note, same channel, but that's not where it stops. The note still plays because you're in, now in the release phase of the envelope. So that note is off, but we're still in release, confuse the algorithm that uh, assigns a, a slot, a channel, to the to note the, that's playing. Yeah, to the next note that was pressed. And there we lost some note off signals. <laughs> yeah, 
And then what we uh, what we did as well was um, use a MIDI analyzer on my MacBook to analyze some of my uh, modern day MIDI equipment. Mm how they did their all note off messages like uh, the key step and the beat step when you press the uh, stop button a few times it sends an all notes off signal so we analyzed that and implemented that as well into the wavetable synth yeah that was quite essential actually <laughs> but then finally i solved this software bug with the release and yeah ever since we were fine yeah and then uh, last week, the, the week before last week, we finally got everything working, the filter and everything, and you were trying to set up the filter. And would you please tell the class how you tried to, cal to, to calibrate the filter? What waveform did you use to try and calibrate the filter? I'm sorry, I'm not an audio engineer. I used the si si sinus wave. <laughs> Yeah, he tried to use the sine wave. And the darn filter didn't work at all. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why the filter didn't work on a perfectly clean waveform that doesn't have any overtones at all. Right. <laughs> you stuck up an, an entire afternoon for that mm -hmm. until I came downstairs and said, why aren't you using a sine wave to tr try to use a filter? So we switched to a rectangular wave and... It worked perfectly. It, worked. it was working the whole time. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, you live and learn. <laughs> so that's why you need the symbiosis of an engineer and a musician. Right. <laughs> now let's uh, let's talk about the roadmap. What are we going to do to this synthesizer? Because as any project, any work of art, it's never finished, only abandoned. As Leonardo da Vinci said. Oh, he did? Yeah. Cool. And um, let's talk about our roadmap. What we'll eventually do to this synth. Not next week, not the week after, but one day. Um, first is, we were talking about an effect on the synthesizer earlier in, in other episodes, like a delay slash reverb type of effect. Right. That's what we are going to uh, build first. It's already in the code, but it's not working yet. Yeah, we need what to implement it properly. You need, yeah. need to assign some parameters, a card on the menu. It needs some debugging. Uh, what it basically does is, uh, I assign a huge amount of the, the memory available on the STM and as the synth progresses through its tables and voices, I put those amplitude values into the memory. And so you feed in this at a certain clock rate and um, when the buffer is full, you start getting the same amplitudes but out but delayed. And um, they get cut down a little bit in, in volume and then mixed to the original signal and there you have your reverb slash echo effect. Yeah. And then another problem we had uh, was that when you play in the higher registers it detunes a little. We don't fully yet understand why it does that or how it does that. We need to do some investigation into that but it should be a simple software fix. Yeah. Maybe we have to reduce the amount of voices to six or something. Yeah, or huge larger tables with uh, better defined waveforms. Uh, we have to, to yeah, we'll do have some to debugging. Investigate into that. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk about version 2.0, which is what are we going to do for that? Uh, we had a fairly simple idea. It was my idea actually. Because um, right now we have one PCB with one STM outputting one voice per node. So one oscillator per node. And what other polyphonic synthesizers like my DeepMind have is two, no uh, two oscillators per note, mm -hmm. per voice. And I was thinking, why not just build another PCB with another STM on top that gets the same input signals from everything and just adjust that a little. Yeah. So use the same front panel, but have behind two. it have two synthesizers around it. Yeah, and then just uh, some... Uh, connect the STMs together so they can talk together and uh, so you can set how they're detuned to each other. Mm -hmm. So if they're an octave apart or playing the same node or slightly detuned. Right. We can do a lot of a lot with that. And then we also wanted to implement an LFO and a key tracking to the filter. Because mm -hmm. those are features you have on basically every synth and we just haven't had the time to implement them yet. Them yet. And we're also still open for suggestions. If you have built it or have just uh, listened to us and listen to it and have any suggestions on what this synth could need, just write them down in the comments down there and we'll reply to you next week, uh, no, two weeks. We'll reply to you and try and implement it. We're open to suggestions. Yeah, we're very open to suggestions, as always. 
And we're going to uh, show you something very special again next week. It's going to be uh, our next project, just a stepping stone between this one and the next bigger project. This is going to be an STM-based uh, sampler, a drum sampling machine. So it's, uh, you load the samples in and then play them back, basically a sample player. Yeah, we're going to show you that to you next week, including development. And we hope to see you then. Have a really nice fortnight, and I mean the two weeks and not the video game. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Check out my Instagram if you want to see what I'm up to. I'm currently recording an album with artists from all over the world, and you can see my progress on there. Also check out our website, that's fatherandsynthesizer.wordpress.com. That's where you'll find all of our schematics, all of our build data, all of our software. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And remember, stay curious. Yes. I think I, think I smell this sm uh, burning. Let's, uh, <laughs> as well. Right. Did you just hear that? That was our fireplace just to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's getting cold here in Germany.